Hey guys, I'm about to show you why migrating coach crossing is one of the best hedges you can have against what's headed our way. More when I return on the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Hey guys, welcome. You just discovered the Eric McNeil, The Free Show, where it's all about being financially independent, responsible for self, enjoying life, and empowering others. Free. So on today's episode, I'm going to spend some time to help you understand why Migrating Culture Crossing or purchasing a home at Migrating Culture Crossing, which is our sustainable, uh, self-sufficient, sustainable community that we're building in uh, Ghana, West Africa. And I'm going to show you why that is a hedge because people are asking me, well, uh, you know, what's a good, uh, you know, way to prepare for what's coming our way? Well, you see, and, uh, you might not even know what's coming. Or if you really out of the know, you have no clue was headed our way. <laughs> um, but I've been saying for a long time that you can just get ready because um, they're going there and they've been telling you. Now you know, before they wouldn't even tell you, but lately they've been telling you that there's a great reset coming. And this great reset is basically uh, they're downsizing economies, right? And they're restructuring economies. They're getting ready for something new and different, right? When you restructure an organization, you usually lay off people. And, you know, for some of you guys, you're going to get laid off. You're not going to make it. You know, they probably going to end up putting you on some kind of uh, universal basic income and locking you away in some kind of, you know, uh, I don't know, concentration camp, FEMA camp or something. And nobody ever hear from you again. They're just going to let you die. Um, for the rest of you guys, they're going to make sure you stop having children. I don't know if you've ever seen this movie, Idiocracy. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a crazy movie, but it's it, it's real life. It's telling you what's coming your way. Idiocracy, right? You, you need to go and watch that movie because this is about the state of affairs and where we're headed. Um, yeah, so, but at any rate, I, I wanted to share with you why this whole uh, sustainable community that we're building is a good uh, option for most people. Because most people, you're going to find out, most people are going to lose their money. They, you know, I mean, I don't want to see that. But most people are going to lose everything. They're going to lose, and you're going to look back and you're going to, those people who uh, had faith in what we're doing at Migrating Culture Crossing, and I know it took a lot of faith for you to uh, send us your money and to believe that we can see you guys through uh, this thing and get your home built and so that you can come out of this on the other side with something you're going to see why you made that choice you got you know and those of you who sat on your money and just say oh I, i'm gonna just wait and i'm gonna do this and i'm gonna go invest in gold i'm gonna go invest in bitcoin i'm gonna go invest in crypto i'm gonna i'm gonna do this you're gonna lose everything baby you're gonna lose everything uh, I, I hate to see it i hate to see it but i'm just telling you i'm telling you i've been through this thing i've been through this uh where you ride a few times. So I've seen it, <laughs> you know, so I, I'm going to um, do the rest of the video from my computer because I want to really show you some stuff today. It's going to be a, a detailed video. So let's go to my computer and let's get at it. Okay, guys, you know what? I'm actually having to record uh, this portion over again because I went through the entire recording and lo and behold, I had my mic set on do not record, which is something I usually don't do, but I was doing something and I forgot. And so I made this video about an hour long recording. Lo and behold, there was no sound. So I'm having to re-record this over. And it goes to show you today is Sunday. The devil is working on Sunday, right? Devil work all the time. And it's probably one of my most important videos, and um, and it's at a time when I need to be uh, 
doing other things, watching the markets and getting other things prepared for Monday. And I'm having to re-record this over. So um, you guys must know I really love you guys and uh, really care about you guys for me to go through this whole process again. But, you know, it is what it is. Let's do it. Um, I want to just basically start out with this uh, on my Facebook page. And this is why I tell you guys, hit my Facebook page because a lot of times I can't be uh, making videos because I'm trying to run a company and um, we got homes to build and um, and at the end of the day uh, you may not see me make a video and you know and I might be just communicating with our home buyers directly and you know without going through the video updates and um, so but the Facebook I can just put out things every day and I'm usually putting out things every day multiple times a day sometimes um, but at any rate, if you scroll down my Facebook page, you can see that uh, I have how to purchase a very nice home for half price in Ghana. You can still do it. So, you know, uh, that's at the top of the page. It's been there for a while. Uh, let's see. You got, um, you know, me just posting little quotes and things like that, like this morning. I say, don't ruin a good today by thinking about a bad yesterday. Let it go. And, you know, normalize reading to your unborn child and getting them to read as early as possible. Take all of those gadgets away from them. iPhone, iPad, you know, Android. And make them read a book. And, you know, humble yourself. A life will do it for you guys. Um... Birds born in a cage think flying is an illness. Things like this. People have serious debates about, uh, you know, whether birds can think. And at the end of the day, it's not about whether birds can think. It's a metaphor. Bird is a metaphor. And the cage is a metaphor, guys. You have to think about this stuff sometime. But, um, yeah, Kevin Hart opens a vegan restaurant called the Hart House. Guys, you know, this that told people, you know, I won't lie, this stuff, it looks good if you into this, uh, this food with no nutrition, you know, stuff looks like, like a drug, it's addictive, you know, but it, it, it has nothing of value for you in here. All of this lab made, you know, like, you know, I'm sure he's using like some Beyond Meat uh, Impossible Burger, you know, that these meats made in a lab. Man, give me my bush meat any day of the week, uh, you know, over this stuff. This this is not food, guys. It's food-like, but, and, um, yeah, it's, it's not real food. Um, I hear some real food. This is some of my muesli uh, that I get from Relish in Osu here in Ghana. And, you know, I put some mango and bananas and almond milk in it. And this is real food, you know, live food. And this is the type of stuff. Uh, that keep you alive. But this is uh, what I wanted to get to. I made a post a few days ago. Get ready, stock market about to crash 20% and crypto 70%. The everything bubble is popping. Okay, you get it. The everything bubble is popping. People uh, had a problem with this. And so I said, okay. Uh, I don't know for sure if it's going to crash. Um, it's just my opinion. But if, if you like, I'm going to change it from about to. You see, I got the little, that's where I got the strike through, through here. And I put May. I added May. So get ready. Stock market may crash 20%. Crypto, 70%. The everything bubble is popping. Okay, how about that? And uh, you said, well, Eric, how, how do you know this? And, you know. People just, you know, they had all kind of comments, boy. You see, I got 56 comments on that, boy. So it, it created uh, some debate, you know. Yeah, and this is exactly what's about to happen to a lot of people. Your money's about to fly away. Goodbye. Um, but anyway, some of my Facebook friends, they're like, hey, one of them, why do you do this? If this isn't your area of expertise, right? So, um you know, like, oh, I thought your area of expertise was, I thought you guys uh, went to construction. Let me tell you, uh, there is no greater uh, of, uh, intensive capital business uh, that you can get into outside of real estate. Like building homes and building real estate is about the most intensive capital business 
that a private individual can get into. Anything that requires more capital is probably something that the government helps with. Like, you know, when Elon Musk making these spaceships, yeah, that, that probably requires more capital, of course, but he has the government, government paying, right? But if it's, you know, real estate is about the most intensive, uh, capital intensive business you can be in, in the private industry. And anybody in this business who's running a real estate company in real estate development, they better understand markets. They better understand finance. They better understand this stuff. So when you say, hey, this isn't my expertise, of course it is. Do you think I can do this without understanding the numbers of the economy? Do you think I can build this type of stuff and uh, make promises about giving you a half price home over three years without understanding the dynamics of our economy? No, no, I can't. Um, so I absolutely have to understand the numbers and where our economy is going and where the global economy is going. So when I make these type of announcements, I'm just not doing it for shock value. I'm doing it because somebody is lying to you on television. And I told them that somebody is like, uh, let me see. Uh, Amer. Yeah, yeah, this is, so let me show you this. These are the type of people you need to be uh, wary of. Who remember this? 2008. Listen to this comment. A great job. I am. <laughs> okay, Peter writes, should I be worried about Bear Stearns in terms of liquidity and get my money out of there? No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Do not take your money out. This is real. Look, if there's one takeaway other than a plus 400 or something, Bear Stearns is not in trouble. I mean, if anything, they're more likely to be taken over. Don't move your money from Bear. That's just being silly. Don't be silly. Bear money's back after the break. You, you, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Don't be silly. Leave your money in Bear Stearns. See, so when somebody's not coming on here, pumping this type of nonsense into you, then this is what you're listening to on CNN, CNBC, ABC, and all these other nonsensical shows that you listen to. And this is what you guys expect me to do. Just continue to blow smoke up your behind like Jim Crane. And he shouldn't, I hope, God, I hope he's not on TV anymore. I mean, I, I don't look at this stuff, but uh, hopefully uh, he's still not misleading people like this. No, no, no. Bear Stearns is fine. Come on, guys. Wake up. These people on TV, television, are misleading you. Misleading you. While they are getting their money out of the market, you putting your money in. Baby, you guys in for a rude awakening. Anyway, let's, let's move on. Um, do you guys recall this man? Uh, let's see if we have any more comments worth talking about. Uh, yeah, crypto already crashed, my friend. Okay, and I told you you're right. <laughs> but things can get much worse, right? And I even posted about a year ago about Bitcoin crashing. So, you know, but people don't listen. Um, and this is one of my Facebook friends. She says... You know, when I said it's going to crash, he says, in your dreams. And I say, we'll revisit this comment before the end of the year, okay? So, uh, at any rate, here's uh, another post I made. If you guys remember this movie in 2015 called The Big Short, this was about the guy uh, who predicted the 2008 housing market crash. And he had a hedge fund. So he went to the banks and stuff and he said, you know, I want to open up a short against the housing market. And he was like, well, we don't, it's like, we don't have a product for that, but that would be suicidal. Why would you open up a short against, you want to open up a short against the housing market, blah, blah, blah. He was like, well, I think it's going crazy. It's like, okay, we'll, you know, because when you uh, short the market, you're betting against the market. You're taking a bet. So they're like, okay, cool. You want to do it? We'll create a product for you. Go ahead and take your money right quick. He's like, okay. He ended up making uh, hundreds of millions for his investors and hundred, a hundred, over a hundred million for himself, you know, because he betted against the market like this. And, um, and this is what I'm telling you. 
where we're headed again. And if you don't believe me, this guy's name was Michael Burry. And Michael Burry, uh, let me see, let me show you. Michael Burry. You look in the news recently. Look in the news. Okay, Michael Burry sold all of his holdings. <laughs> Michael Burry sold all of his stocks in Q2. This year, guys, he only kept one stock. You know what stock he kept was uh, prison stock. Prison. Did you see that? He said because there's going to be a lot of rioting going on. He said because what's about to happen now is worse than what uh, went down in 2008. So this year he sold everything. He's shorting the markets again, guys. Hmm? Let's see. What else? What else we have? Oh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Look at him. See, they front-running you. They front-running you guys. I'm telling you. Um, Tesla. Mr. Elon Musk sells 75% of his Bitcoin. Right? It has sold 75% of the Bitcoin it had purchased. Hmm. 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 Yep, yep. Yep, yep, yep. Seventy five percent. Why do you think he he recently sold that seventy five percent? Because he feel that it's just gonna shoot to the moon. You think that's what Elon Musk is thinking? He, it, it's gonna shoot to the moon right up there with uh with his Tesla car in space. And what is it? The the the, the Rocket Man, the Moon Man. What was this? Uh, I believe it's Rocket Man. I don't have a guy. I know it's some some car he done. Um, I forgot what to call him. But you guys know what I'm talking about. All this old fake news that they be putting on you. Like they told you. Uh, Star Man. Star Man in the sky. SpaceX launches a car into orbit. And they told you this foolishness. It just don't even look. This, this, this looks staged, don't it? I guess this don't supposed to be the real one. I don't know. But you guys believe it. That he just put a Tesla in space. Didn't do anything to the Tesla. But they got to have all this stuff. And they tell you to go to space. But he just put a Tesla into space. And it's supposed to be roaming with cameras. And that's why his, you know, he believed his Bitcoin going to shoot to the moon with, with Starman. Huh? Man, you guys keep listening to this fake news. You're going to always be misled. I'm telling you that now. I'm telling you that now. You better. All right. So anyway, let's let's move on. Let's move on. What else I have? I'm going to jump to the charts, guys, because uh, maybe, you know, you can believe the charts. Because, you know, they say men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie, charts don't lie, you know. So I'm going to take them numbers. The numbers are just, you know, uh, represented. On a chart. So let's take a look at the charts. People say, well, Eric, Eric, what can I invest in then? And I'm telling you, hmm, virtually nothing. Virtually nothing. You should, uh, you should, during this time, this is what we call a deflationary recession that we're, we're, we're in. I say we're already in. They, they kind of change in the definitions to say we're not in one yet, but we're headed that way. Man, I say we've been in one. Huh? We're in a recession. It's a deflationary recession. And in a deflationary recession, all assets go down. Uh, for those of you who are gung-ho on precious metals, it's, going, it's been going down and it could continue to go down. For those of you who are gung-ho on cryptocurrency, it's been going down and will continue to go down. For those of you who are gung-ho on just about anything, they're going down, guys. They're going down. Um... I don't know. Let's let's just look at let's look at silver. You know, let, let's look at silver. This is the, the monthly chart of silver. And as you can see, silver topped out in 79. It went down, boom, came back up. It, it took <laughs> it 
It took uh, until 2011 for it to reach its all-time high. And you see how it's so heavily manipulated. Guys, these markets are manipulated. I'm telling you. It doesn't matter if you, you believe in silver. You believe in it. I believe those are real money, too. But it doesn't change the fact that they are being manipulated. And you say, well, they can't manipulate it forever, Eric. Well, they can manipulate it for as long as you're alive. That's for sure. And you see all this is manipulation. They manipulated the market down. And right now, it's down about, it's still down about 64%. From its all-time high, it's down about 64% from its all-time high, guys. That's silver, right? So if you just gung on silver, just think if you had to purchase that silver uh, around 2011. How, how would you feel now? Let's look at gold. It's just all manipulation. And unfortunately, this is what it is. Gold is down maybe about 18%. So you'll be much better off if you had to purchase gold. Um, let's look at uh, um, the, one of the, I think the S&P, S&P 500. Standard and Poor's 500. And let's get rid of some of this stuff off. And let's say this from its all time high, it's down about 24%. 24%. Let's look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ. Where are we at? NASDAQ is down about twenty-eight percent. Down about twenty-eight percent. And let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Dow Jones Industrial Average. Um let's see. Yep. So, let's do this, let's uh, do that, let's do this. So, I want to show you something here. Um, yeah, let's go in here. And let's, let's do this. Boom. All right, so I'm trying to get rid of all of this stuff off my chart. So, yeah, so I think this is, uh, yeah, it's a little easy to read. Yeah. All right, so yeah, I'm going to hide this for the time being. This is, again, the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, and this is the one we're going to go into a little detail with. All right, so it topped out. Let's see, and it is down about 15%. Now, if you're not familiar with this Dow Jones Industrial Average, it is comprised of 30 of the largest corporations uh, in the U.S. You know, they don't have to be the, the largest, but they're like some of the most reputable. Um, Dow Jones. Let's see. Let's go to... A list of the companies I can show you it's like Apple and IBM and uh, Walmart uh, 3M Boeing Caterpillar uh, Chevron Cisco Coca-Cola Disney um, Dow Chemical Goldman Sachs JP Morgan Johnson & Johnson McDonald's Merck Microsoft so you see these big visa um, so these companies can Prize of the Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average, right? So um, it's just an average of their 
companies, stock prices. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're looking at this on a monthly. It goes all the way back. They have data in here to 1896. And you can see significant periods over time, like this period was during the uh, dot-com uh, bubble burst, like right here. Dot-com bubble. I mean, I'm sorry. This is the uh, 1930s Great Depression, rather. You know, so you can see the significant uh, bear market we went into. All right, what I'm going to do is put a channel. I'm going to draw a channel just to give you a better graphical representation of what's happening here. So from the top to the bottom, you see a channel. That channel has a midpoint going through it. So the Great Depression uh, was the most significant, uh, you know, pullback we had, right? We just, shoot, we went all the way down to the bottom. That represents the bottom of our channel and the top of our channel. Um, in other time periods, the market just kind of trended around the center of the channel, and then lately it started going back up, you know, around 99, it went back up to the top, and we had that market correction. So during the Great Depression market correction, it dropped about 89%, it looks like. Yeah, that's significant. Whoa, 89%. Um, during the dot-com bubble burst um, correction, it dropped about 20%, about 40%. Uh, and then around the Great uh, Recession, 2007, 2008, it dropped about 54%. About 54%. So that gives you kind of a perspective on uh, the size of these drops, and uh, you can kind of see it on the chart. So now I'm saying, guys, we're about to drop here. We're, we're rolling over, we're rolling over, and we're about to have this another drop. Um, let me see if we go in a little bit. You can kind of even see the COVID crash right here. It just kind of dropped real quick and came back up make a new all-time high. Uh, what did it? That dropped about, mm, about 38, 39%. And, but it was very quick and it came right back up to make all-time new high. So you can argue that even if we drop, we're going to do the same thing. And we may. We may do it. Um, I'm saying that I think we're about to do something more like this you know, this time period, which was the uh, Great Recession, 2008, 2007. I think we're about to do that. I think that's what we're about to do. And uh, the chart looks very similar um, to that time period, right? You see how it's rolling over. And what I'm going to do is put an indicator. There, there's many indicators. Some indicators make a case that we're about to be very bullish that we've reached the bottom, while others uh, make a case that we're, it's bearish and we're, we have further to go. So the Gaussian channel is an indicator that I use from time to time. And, um, and in a, a nutshell, let me hide this. I'm going to hide this. So in a nutshell, the Gaussian channel just basically says, you know, uh, that when price action touches uh, the Gaussian channel, then it pulls it in and it pulls it down like quicksand. So your price keeps going down and down and down. And so it's important not to get close, not to touch in there. Um, but so you can see in 2000, I'm going to go to a weekly. So it, uh, well, that's, that's still on the monthly. Um, but you can see that in the 2007, 2008, once we uh, wick down over that Gaussian channel and just barely on the top, you know, get close then it just kind of sucked it on down. And we are, we have done it already here. 
we kind of rolled over and we went right on top near it and now uh, we tried to go back up and we're coming back down and this is where we get sucked down into it on the monthly now if we go into the weekly it looks different so I want to show you uh, how it looks on the weekly so on the, the weekly chart it shows that it's already been in the Gaussian channel and it, it went down below it came back up to try to get out but the middle line, the middle line of the Gaussian channel, um, you know, boom, it got rejected. So it served as resistance, as resistance. Um, let's go back over here to this time period, the Great Recession, 2007, 2008. And you notice the similarities. It rolled over, price action came underneath the Gaussian channel. It tried to fight back to get over the Gaussian channel, got rejected at this middle line, and rejected off and started bouncing down, and then true push. That's the scenario that it looks like we're headed at. And if you look at these two, you see they look very similar very similar in price action. We rolled over, we got rejected from the middle of the Gaussian channel, and poof, uh, this is on a weekly chart. We're already two weeks, uh, three weeks uh, after being rejected with three weeks. One, two, three, if you look at those bars. One, two, three, we're already three weeks into this after being rejected off that midpoint of the Gaussian channel. And if you go back to 2007, 2008, this was, uh, we're right here, when we got rejected, we're right in 2008, May of 2008, we got rejected, you know, uh, April, and we kind of played with it a couple months, two, three, I mean, a couple, about a week, two, three, four weeks we tried, we couldn't get over that uh, middle point of the Gaussian channel, and once we couldn't get over and we were rejected, one, two, three, so right now I say, uh, we would be about roughly here. This, this is about, we're at this point in current day, so we're, we're about right here. So you can see what happens next. Over the next one or two weeks, we should have some significant, uh, yeah, corrections coming on. If, if my prediction is right, if this is where we are uh, in the current scenario then baby over the next few weeks we're going down and, and and notice this notice this look at look at what happens is in your guys in channel on the weekly on the weekly is that when you get when you go down you're still red and then you come coming back up it's i mean it, it's still green and then once you're coming back up to retail it turns red it turned red you see that so when you got rejected, you were rejected in a red Gaussian channel. Uh, and notice, look at this. We came down, we were green, we were green. It, then it came back up, turning red, turning red. Hmm? And we got rejected. Poof. So you got a lot of red to go. And it's going to be circling down. You see that? You see that, guys? Looks very similar, very similar to the Great Recession. So uh, I, I'm just telling you guys, don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. This thing is, this thing is, it's not over with yet. Now, if 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 my prediction is accurate that uh, we are somewhere right here, well, let's see. If we're if we're somewhere right here, we still had, we still had. 47% uh, correction to go. 47%. Boom. Let's see. So from um, here, and we go down another 47%. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. That'll put us at about 16,000. Uh, okay. 490. So let's, uh, put a, let's put a line right there. So that'll put us about... Somewhere about there. All right, so let's uh, let's turn our channel. Where's that channel? 
Mama, Mama. Let's turn. Yeah, this thing isn't looking good, guys. I'm just telling you now, it's not looking good. You can, you know, you can listen to these people all you want to about, you know, the economy is okay. Nah, man, we about to bounce back. And we about to do it bigger and better than ever. And I'm telling you, mm -mm, mm -mm, no way, no how do I believe that foolishness. I'm just put my. I got a lot of things going on in these charts sometimes. I have so much going on, but I want to, uh, okay, that's the one I drew. All right, so, um, so I just want to basically show you this on, on the monthly chart where that line is. So this is to pretend that it could, you know, if things repeat from uh, 2007, 2008, and I'm saying that, hey, we can drop another, uh, you know, 40% or so. You know, I was conservative on my post. On my post, I just said, hey, you know, we're going down uh, soon, 20, 20%, and, you know, in the stock market. But things can get real nasty because basically, uh, these things are about averages, so it, it wants to, once it starts dropping like this, it wants to really go back to this center line, right? It, it's really drawn toward the center, right? And um, so just think about if we go all the way down, that's, that's even worse. That's even worse. That's like, you know, from where we at now, that might be <laughs> another 60%. Poof, if we go down like that. So, um, Telling you guys, this thing can get bad. It can get, get, get very bad. So you sit there and listen to people like Kramer telling you, no, 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 that's silly. Eric doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm the one who knows. I'm on TV. He's not. Okay. All right. Yep. So everything's going to be going down, guys. Now, let me, sh let me show you what's not going to be going down for a while. And uh, let's go to the EYX. This is the U.S. dollar index, okay? <laughs> the U.S. dollar index. Now, I want you to check this out. Monthly chart. Again. And I'm just going to put some couple lines on it so that you can get a, a better view of it. Maybe like this, I'll put that on here. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm just going to toss them. So these are called trend lines. It, it gives you a graphical representation of uh, what price action is doing, so you can see it graphically. And yeah, so I draw these trend lines, and this is uh, kind of a, a wedge here. Uh, they call it a falling wedge. And the idea is that it's going to bounce off and, and it's going, it's just bouncing off. And there are some patterns that you draw that tend to be, um, you know, bearish. It has other patterns that tend to be uh, more bullish. But anyway, typically when you, you have a breakout, uh, you know, it says that, hey, this pattern broken out and you trade with the, the breakout if it's going up you, you know you trade it at the breakout and you trade it up if it's if it breaks out down then you say oh it's going down at the breakout and you put a place a trade so at any rate it broke out boof and now it's bullish it's going parabolic you see it is it, not just going uh like you know let's see yeah, you, you really got to, um, yeah, look at this stuff and understand these markets. So it's not good enough for me to just say, hey, I be a homes and for a living. Uh, I got to understand market action, guys, uh, you know, because we depend on commodities and, you know, getting building materials. So this thing, what's interesting is this breakout. 
It's not, it's not breaking out like this, but it's breaking out like this. It's going like straight up. Do you know what that mean? That mean is going parabolic, guys. It's going almost straight up. And that means that people are fearful of asset investing and other assets. So what they're doing is they are investing in the dollar. They're going to cash. Right? So this will continue to go up, in my opinion, straight up. You know, so as it goes straight up, man, the, the, the other assets, you know, NASDAQ, <laughs> S&P, uh, <laughs> Dow Jones, Industrial Average, Cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, all that stuff is going to lose value. Gold, silver, you name it, housing, you name it, it's, it's going to be losing value, guys, as people go to cash because they're afraid, they're afraid. So this is what we're dealing with. And I'm telling you, um, the dollar even isn't doing well, but people are putting their money in the dollar because they are afraid. But it's like, you know, assume that you go into a party and you're short, you know, let's say you short. Um, and, you know, like me, I am not that tall, you know, but if I go to a party uh, with some midgets, then I'm the tallest man at the party, even though I'm just five, six. But if I go into a room full of midgets, then, hey, Eric, you so tall. That's how the dollar is now. It's not doing well, but everybody else at the party is doing even worse. So the dollar looking good. So everybody giving the dollar the attention, even though the dollar is, is suffering all this inflation, it's still the man at the party. <laughs> you see how that works. <laughs> you know, it's the big man. So the dollar is the last one to fall. And, uh, you know, all these countries, their currencies are doing bad. Um, Ghana's currency is doing bad because the economy of the world is doing bad. So quite naturally, everybody starts to look uh, for the dollar as the last safe haven. But uh, eventually the dollar falls to people. It falls. So, yeah. That's the thing, guys. That's the thing. It's the ugly truth about this whole investment thing that uh, these guys, every now and then, they crash the markets because they know, um, you know, they got you between a rock and a hard place. Um, so, yeah, at any rate, this is where we are today, guys. Uh, you know, I don't know where we're going in this whole thing. I, I hope and pray that uh, it would be, um, you know, not too painful. I, I, I hope it, you know, shoots down and comes right back up, makes all-time new highs. You know, I hope it doesn't even go down anymore. I hope we're at the bottom. I don't believe we're at the bottom. And I believe that when those markets open on Tuesday, because Monday is a holiday, it's Labor Day in the U.S., but I believe when those markets open on Tuesday, the market's going to continue to go down. That's, that's what I believe. And I believe even if you do get a, a short-term pop, it's still the long-term is down. You just heard not too long ago, maybe within the last week or two, Jerome Powell, uh, the head of the Federal Reserve, boy came on TV and said that, hey, we're tightening our belt and get ready to be tightened. You know, get ready. Uh, we're going to bring this inflation under control by any means necessary. So, um, you know, what does that mean? It means that the markets don't like this. It means that, you know, there's not going to be liquidity uh, for people to get cheap money and then invest in. So uh, when they raise those inflation, so that means, you know, things are gonna continue to go down. That's basically what uh, <laughs> he was setting us up for. He was setting the stage to drive the markets down. Now, what comes when the markets go down, the stock markets go down, then it's going to also drive crypto markets down. Everything's going down, guys. Everything. Okay? So, I keep telling you guys, this thing, this thing is real. They are uh, resetting. This is a global reset. 
They're resetting us. Everything from the way we think, the way we live, play, everything's being reset. With things that we eat, right? You, you see that I showed you how uh, Kevin uh, Hart is promoting their uh, new vegan type lifestyle. And it's not veganism in the sense of traditionally how we were vegan. You know, we, uh, you know, I was vegetarian. Uh, for many years, and vegan for a, a, a small portion of those years. And it was at that time because you wanted to eat healthy, you wanted to eat live foods, but it wasn't just because, you know, I, you know, I, I don't want to see an animal die, and so because you're not willing to see an animal die, you, you just eat lab meat. You just eat some lab uh, creation. It's not meat, you know. It's created in a lab. And you don't know if that stuff is reprogramming your DNA, reprogramming your genome in mm, hundred years time uh, because you've been eating this and feeding it to your children. We'll find that people only have a life uh, span of about 40 years. And you run the, you know, and, and uh, people, old people would say, I remember, you know, the few people who went there, it's like, uh, people write, uh, have books written about people used to live 80 to 120 years, and you'd be like, your children would be saying, that's a myth. Ain't nobody ever lived no 80 years. Man, most you get is about 40 years. You see that? Because they've reprogrammed you through all of these shots and these foods that you started eating, reprogrammed your genome so that now... <laughs> the time that you live may only be 40 years, right? So everything is being reset. Not only the economy, but you are being reset. We're all being reset. So I'm just telling you, when these markets open, guys, on Tuesday, get ready. Get ready. So anyway, guys, I, I know that was a bit of a long video today, um, but I just wanted to give you that analysis uh, to let you know uh, my opinions on where we're headed in the markets, on what's going on, why I'm very pessimistic on the outlook. I'm very bearish and I'm saying, hey, things are not looking good. <laughs> no way, no how. And you can keep on letting these people uh, blow smoke up your behind if you want to. But when those markets open and get this, it's Labor Day weekend in the U.S., so the markets will not be open on Monday, Tuesday. It's when the fireworks begin, my friend, Tuesday. It is September. The markets usually do bad in September. I, I hope you understand that. Um, and I put out that post not too long ago uh, about Pink Floyd. Every time they release an album, the markets fall. <laughs> It's just kind of a tongue-in-cheek thing I did, and, but not only are they uh, releasing one, they're releasing two albums. They're releasing one in September, one in October. Man. So, you guys better get ready. You guys better get ready. This is September. 911. Baby. Yeah. Perfect storm. I think it's brewing. Perfect storm. Yeah. Yep. Anyway. This is where I think we're headed, is uh, down, down. I'm going down, yep. Well, anyway, I'm not going down. They, a lot of people going down. You guys are gonna find out why. And this is why I say, uh, for those people who decided to come on board and uh, take a chance with migrating Coach Crossing, um, I think you, uh, Brandon, thank you, and you're going to find out why you put your money behind us and why you had faith in us. I don't know if you're a religious person, you know, I'm not very religious, but, you know, I still uh, have a good understanding of uh, biblical scripture, right? I was raised in a church, right? So how can you not? So, um, and so I read the stories and take the moral lessons that are outlined in the stories, you know, not that I uh, believe everything uh, in the Bible, but there's a lesson to be had in a lot of those stories, right? But if we recall the story of uh, 
Noah's Ark. Noah said a flood was coming. People ignored Noah. So he, you know, people steadily building. This is what I'm building. What are you doing? Man, he's crazy. He's crazy, you know. They called him crazy until the floods came. And then they wanted, they wanted to be on. They wanted to be a part. But those people, those animals, you know, everything was dependent on Noah. They didn't know if, if he was going to be able to deliver. But they had faith that, hey, you know, he's going to be able to get us through this. And so a lot of, right now there's a lot of people, they don't know uh, with certainty that migrating culture crossing uh, will deliver. They have, they have faith. And people have um, sent us money for multiple homes, right? I mean, a lot. And so they're saying that we see what's coming, Eric. But I don't know what to do with the money. And I don't want to lose it all because a lot of people went through 2000, 2008, lost everything. And so they rather put it into us, say, just build me these homes in the community. And so we have a fiduciary obligation to these people. And this is why we are much more than just a home builder, but we are essentially a hedge against economic woes. That's why uh, you have come to Migrating Culture Limited Company as a hedge. Right? So for those of you guys who have taken that plunge and are depending on us, I assure you you're going to see why you went with us after this thing uh, it's all done and said. But those of you who just ignored the warnings and set, you know, uh, on your capital and, you know, tried to invest in a hedge, gold and silver and, <laughs> and all these other speculative investments, Bitcoin and stuff. I'm not saying don't invest in that stuff, but I'm telling you that most people are not investors. So even though that this stuff eventually will have value, it may not have value when you need it. Like right now, you go, you've invested in Bitcoin and it shoots down 70%. Well, what if it stays down like this uh, for another two years? Can you survive? I mean, eventually it may turn around and go back up to the moon. Or it may not never come up, right? It may never come, you know, you got thousands of cryptocurrencies. The one that you expecting to come up may not come up again. So do you understand that? That they're going to, in, in, in the year 2000, there were so many dot-com companies. You remember that? And when we went through the crash, only a few of them came out of this thing. One of them being Amazon. And it took Amazon 10 years to get back to his all-time high. But a lot of other companies were weeded out, destroyed. I believe this is the season to weed out the cryptocurrency companies. So how do you know if the ones that you've invested your money in aren't about to get weeded out? Because they about to, they about to, the Grim Reaper is about to come through. I, I assure you, this is what's going to come out of this. Just a few, few of these coins are going to come. And I grant it, some of them are going to do extraordinarily well because that's what they're moving us to our digital currencies. But if you don't know what you're doing in this space, that's why I don't just recommend it to anybody because um, I can say invest in this, that, and the other, but you're not a trader. Right now, this is a trader's environment. You can go to sleep, wake up, and market be down 30% on you overnight <laughs> because that market trades 24 seven, baby. And so if you don't know what you're doing, and you can't sit on your money, you know, now if you have time, just wait, uh, 
you know, another four or five years, then you might be fine. Or you may not be if your coin goes to zero and never comes back. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, so, at any rate, this is where we are today, guys. You, you've heard me and I've spent long enough on this topic. I've got work to do. I'm running a business. Um, I haven't been making any videos because I've been tending to business and things are getting, they're heating up. Um, so, we are back in the rainy season. And, you know, on the property, um, we're preparing the foundations, uh, you know, have some issues that we're dealing with. But the next time I'm out on site, I'll be able to make an extensive video uh, to show you our progress. But believe me that we are making progress, right? Um, so, at any rate, guys, you like what I'm talking about, uh, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. Like, share, comment, give me your feedback on what you think is going on. Um, September, just beware of September, that's all I'm going to say. Um, get ready for the fireworks. Uh, you can also, as I've shown you, find me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Eric McNeil. It's free. Haven't already done so, hit our website, www.migratingcultureCrossing.com. And you can still, even with this economy, you can still... Uh, Take that little money you have left before it just poof, <laughs> vanishes and just say, hey, let me go ahead and buy me one of these houses half price um, and, you know, put my money there instead of losing everything, guys. Okay. Take advantage of our half price home promo. Um, okay. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Eric McNeil. It's free. And as always, hoorah, ahuru, now be free.